I'm trying to square up and ultimately glue up a large frame like this. And the usual way to do it is with a framing square. But I'm trying to hold this in one spot like this and at the same time see if I can get a screw in on this corner. I, I need a third hand. This is my third hand. I'm Jim Heavey from Wood Magazine. Let me show you a tip from our file on how to create one of these. This is my third hand. It's called a squaring brace and it works really well. It's used in a corner like this to hold the two edges together. A clamp goes here and a clamp goes here. Here's how you make it. I'm starting with a 12 inch square piece of 3 quarter inch multiply ply. I want to assure that I have a perfect 90 degree corner and I've checked that. And now setting my miter gauge at 45, I'm going to make one long rip from corner to corner. Now to allow for clamps when it's ultimately used for clamping, from each corner I'll measure down two and three quarters of an inch and make a small hash mark. From that mark, I'll use my square to draw a line about three inches down. This opening creates a perfect spot for those clamps. Using my square three inches down that line, I'll make a 90 degree line back out to the diagonal. I'm marking for a small relief cut at the bottom of this jig to keep it from sticking to any glue that may squeeze out during clamping. Using my square and aligning it with the point of the plywood, I'll make a mark two and three quarters of an inch in. This will be for a two inch hole that will provide additional clamping power. The cuts are made with a jigsaw or a bandsaw, and for the hole, use a two inch Forstner bit. Using a two inch Forstner bit creates an awful lot of torque. So make sure that you have a good fence stabilized and clamped behind. As you're drilling, make multiple slightly deeper passes to keep from overworking the bit and burning your work. And a sacrificial board laid underneath will prevent tear out as that bit exits the back side of the jig. A little light sanding on all exposed edges will provide a really nice good feel for your new jig. This is my completed squaring brace. The way I'm going to use it is I'll get those corners lined up the way I want them like so. Put one clamp on this end and then put one clamp here. This gives me full access now to put my screws and glue on there. Let me take this apart. Let's put some glue on and finish that joint. Now I've repeated the same glue and screw process on each of the three remaining sides. And by using this squaring brace, I know that it's square. But there's a way to check this another way, just to kind of see. If I take a tape measure and I measure diagonally like this, outside to outside is 44 and a half. And doing the same thing this way, also shows 44 and a half. So I've checked the square of this two ways. One is the old fashioned angles and the other is using this jig. Works great, so you can be pretty comfortable this will work for you.